Welcome. What's up? <laughs> Welcome to our first episode of The Frequency Project. Yeah. My name is Joseph Keen, as you can see. And I'm David Lawrence. This is David hey. Lawrence. And uh, we're just, we just started this podcast and we want everybody to understand what we're doing with energy. Um, we're both wearing this device called the Healy. And it is, explain what this is and then go into where you found it and how we all came about doing all this. Yeah, so um, I guess the first place to start would be college for me. Hold on, a quick, quick description of like what this device does before you get into all that. Well, before I get into that, like I want to get into talking about why, like why what? I think like just the definition of it isn't isn't enough because it's so confusing. Um, okay. Like energy, vibration, all of this stuff that, that we're talking about and frequency, um, they're all connected. And to me, I think it goes as far back as ancient civilizations even. Like I've had this fascination with ancient civilizations um, for a long time, pyramids, and I'm sure a lot of people out there do. And um, it led me down a path of frequency and vibration through um, symbolism, like the flower of life and sacred geometry and just geometry and nature in general, which then led, led me to cymatics, which I think a lot of people have seen those videos around the internet where there's like sand on a plate and then it vibrates and it jumps into this amazing picture. So to me, that was a sign that not only is there frequency vibration in the air that we can't see but when we do see it we can see these amazing geometric patterns that are happening and that that all goes into um, the concept of resonance and finding a resonant frequency within any kind of material object so all material objects have resonant frequencies and those pictures, those geometric pictures that you see happen when material objects have resonant frequencies. So then my mind obviously goes to, do our bodies have resonant frequencies? Do we have resonant frequencies? And what would that look like? So then um, I'm sure a lot of people have heard of sound healing and vibration and um, you know, even those Tibetan singing bowls and the glass and crystal singing bowls um, tuned to very specific frequencies. And this goes back to ancient civilizations. This is knowledge that humans have known for a long time. And for whatever reason, which I think we, we're going to get to in a lot of these podcasts, we haven't been given this knowledge. It hasn't been passed down to us. <clears throat> like it used to be. So fast forward to, um, oh my God. <clears throat> fast forward to this last, what was it? March, 2020. I'm on a plane finishing a contract. Yeah. Oh, sorry. What was that? Sorry. I'm, I'm trying to play a little clip in the background of like the, the patterns. Oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. But the song came on, sorry. So fast forward <laughs> to March of 2020. I'm on a plane and Melissa and I just finished a contract uh, in Australia, our eighth contract in fact. Um, and March 2020, we're on a plane flying from Brisbane to Melbourne. And this guy is wearing a device on him and is blinking and it looks like this. Oh yeah. So here's, here's a picture of the cymatics. Uh, Sir Hans Jenny <clears throat> did these experiments in the seventies. And before that, 
uh, a guy named Chladni, C-H-L-A-D-N-I. Um, he took metal plates and he struck them with a violin bow. Hmm. I think, I, I don't know exactly when that was, but it was way before the 1970s. I think it was like the 1800s. Yeah, that's crazy. So between Sir Hans Jenny and um, I think it's Chladney or Cladney plates, uh, these two guys kind of pioneered the way of this um, visual representation of resonance. So imagine those sand particles are atoms or cells in your body or airwaves. And then you kind of start to see that resonant frequencies within any material object will produce geometric patterns. And so the hypothesis of Sir Hans Jenny and Cladney was that there must be an underlying vibration within the earth that is making some of the things in nature perfectly symmetrical and geometrical. Hmm. Uh, like uh, the shape of like rose petals and flowers and stuff, right? Like, yeah, or exactly perfect and exactly the same. Yeah, I mean, you cut open fruit, you, you can even look at, um, you know, macro and micro versions of this. You can look at the whole earth and look at riverway systems and then look at the pathways in your brain and look at the, your lungs, how things uh, are very geometric and symmetrical. So to me, that, that, that really sparked a massive light bulb in my head to, to say there's something here. You know, when you look at um, yogis and they're meditating and they have these uh, geometric and symmetrical pictures, the Sri Antra. I don't know if you've ever heard of the Sri Antra, but it's also a, a very um, geometric symmetrical kind of picture and the idea is that when you meditate you kind of you can see these pictures in your in your mind's eye the third eye if you will mm. and the combination of doing yoga and having these mystical experiences that i can't really explain or talk about um to a lot of people and then also having this path within science that's kind of proving these resonant frequencies are everywhere and vibration is everywhere. And then having the idea that quantum mechanics is showing us that everything is, is electricity and the language of the universe is electricity and energy. Einstein um, and Tesla were really talking about that over and over and over again. Well, and then you touched on it for a second, but like what, do you feel is like the um, the connection between meditation and these frequencies? Because I've been trying to figure this out. Because when I first got this Healy device, I was like, "Oh, maybe." Because I'm always looking for, <laughs> for for reasons to not meditate, <laughs> even though I know that I need to meditate all the time because of the type of person I am. Right, um, but. I'm thinking, oh, maybe this frequency thing will take the place of meditation, but it doesn't. It, it, I, I've noticed that it's not the same. Yeah, no, I don't think it, it replaces that. I think it's more of a, a tool to enhance it. Yeah, right. Um, so Zen monks, so your brain has different brain waves. You know that, right? Like we've got, we, we can now put a, 
put the fancy scientific cap on your head and, and know that our brain is emitting light waves that we can measure, which is measurable energy. So the our thoughts, electrical. Yeah, our brain waves are electrical frequencies that that are giving off light waves, proton or photon energy, which is fascinating um, because you know you have you have this science side that we're proving, and then you have the woo woo side of people are like thoughts become things, you know, manifest, yes. and everybody makes fun of that shit, but it's real. Like it is one hundred percent real. We are in this moment in time and space where we are proving that that is true, that we know that our thoughts are giving off energy. So, so going back to, you said the connection between meditation and geometric shapes. So we can measure now brain waves and we know that there are brain states, that there's alpha, um, which alpha happens when you're running, that runner's high. Um, Zen monks go into alpha to, to meditate. It's a, a lot of business and entrepreneur elite people go into alpha state in order to channel the higher version of themselves that is unstoppable. I don't know if, if anybody out there has had a runner's high, have, have felt that. Um, when you're, you kind of reach that point where your breath and your, uh, heartbeat and the rhythm of you running all kind of syncs up together to this one thing. And then you feel like you are unstoppable. That alpha state is a, is a state that we can measure called, called alpha. Beta is just your waking regular state. Like I'm probably in beta right now. You're probably in beta right now. It's just kind of our basic operating state. Um, and then you have other higher states like theta, gamma, and delta. Theta is an, an altered waking uh, dream. So a lot of shamans use theta. They go into a theta state to go into dream time um, experiences uh, astral projection, all of those things are in theta and it's measured. You can measure it. Gamma is more of an intense transcendental meditation. So a lot of people think that Buddha and Christ were using gamma waves and gamma frequency waves within their thoughts and their body to emit massive waves of energy. Um, and then you have delta, which is basically deep, deep, deep sleep. Deep sleep is Delta. So they say that Delta is very healing when you go into that deep sleep and you kind of black out. There's probably a couple more in there, um, but those are the ones that, that I know and I experiment with myself. Um, you can experiment using binaural frequencies um, to force your brain into these states. Um, I wouldn't say force. It's more like a gently guide. <laughs> Um, because in order to reach those brain states, you can't use your brain to think about it. You have to allow your brain to just make it happen. Um, so I think we're in this, this period where we're bridging this gap to science and things that we already knew. So Zen monks, shamans, um, transcendental, uh, meditators have been around for thousands of years. This is something that Humanity has known for thousands of years. Ancient civilizations have known for thousands of years. And um, now in this Western world, we seem to have just kind of left that aside and have called it woo-woo until, I mean, that's kind of, I don't know if that makes sense to anybody. Does that make sense when I say woo-woo? Like people make fun of all the hippies and people make like fun of... Conspiracy, weird, like whatever... Yeah, yeah, we we kind of get what you're saying, but like, whatever. Yeah, it's like that's for the fairies, or that's for yeah. like fantasy, or that's not real life, you know. Yeah, this um, is what we were talking about yesterday, where it's like everybody is affected by this, but 
most are unaware to the level at which we're talking about. You know, it's it's affecting your body right now. If somebody's like walks in the room, this will we'll kind of recap a little bit of what we talked about yesterday. But like if somebody walks in the room and they're in an angry mood and they're just like yelling and screaming and they're just like got this energy, you feel it. Right. And then it's affecting you. That's happening all the time, all around you by all things that you come in contact with except those moments are when the normal person becomes aware of this because it's so in their face. I, but like I also, the earth and like the grass and a tree are giving off the same things, but they're very just calming and gentle and, and good vibrations for the most part. Right. And so you just take that for granted. Most people do, I think. I agree. I, I think we, we all take a lot of that for granted and, um, it's time to slow down and tap into that and figure out, um, how, how it all works. Cause if you look at nature, you know, talking about the trees and the wind and the rain and seasons, the sun, like everything just works. It just works. You know, the sun feeds the trees, the trees give off oxygen. We breathe oxygen. We breathe out carbon dioxide, the trees breathe carbon dioxide, like everything just works synergistically together. And I think if, if you want to find out more about yourself, look at nature. And so that's kind of where this is coming from. But I also don't assume that people don't know what we're talking about, because you go to the basic level and almost everybody now uses the word vibe. You know what I mean? Like this is like become so popularized now. It's like everyone is waking up to the idea that when somebody walks into the room, they have an energy and it's a vibe. And we can all say that. And most people nowadays, like even if you know nothing about quantum mechanics or physics or anything, that's something that it's like we can all relate to. We can all feel that, you know, that people are giving off a vibe. And I, to me, that is just the beginning of this whole journey in understanding maybe more things that are happening that we can't see. And I think a lot of people like Tesla and Einstein, and um, there's a ton of physicists in this modern day age that are, that are talking about quantum mechanics now, and even Buddhist monks um, like Thich Nhat Hanh and Deepak Chopra. And um, a lot of these modern people are rehashing these ancient techniques and, trying to bridge the gap between our Western mind in um, this ancient knowledge. And I think in order to, to bridge that, we need something that we can understand. And this to me <laughs> is the beginning of that. Um, this Healy device was something that I feel like I knew was the future of wellness and healing way back when I was looking at cymatics, I'm like, if vibrations can do this to a metal plate, what can it do to our bodies if we're sick? You know, if we know what a, a wellness state of vibration would be for our body, could we then use vibration to bring us back into balance and be well again? And the answer is yes. Um, this Scientist Nuno Nina from, Portu from Portugal and Marcus Schmieke, who's a monk and an entrepreneur now, and uh, Christian Halprin, who is a conscious billionaire who has a chain of vegan restaurants in um, Vienna, I think, in Eastern Europe. I'll just keep it general because I don't want to get it wrong. Um, these three guys got together and they basically manifested this device with a lot of research they've been doing on frequencies in the human body. They've discovered 144,000 different frequencies. That was, was that for the impact there? The zoom in? <laughs> it was like, boom. Um, 144,000 frequencies that resonate with your body for 
physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being. Um, I met this guy named Peter on a plane, like I was saying earlier, flying from Brisbane to Melbourne. And as I was um, flying with Melissa, we're having a couple of drinks and celebrating the um, finish of our eighth contract. And we were on the beginning of our adventure, um, which was to be a month long trip across Australia that we had planned six months prior. So as we are sitting on this, the two seats, I'm in the middle, Melissa's by the window and Peter's by the aisle. After, of course, the first drink, I'm like warmed up. Because when I first saw this device, I was like, is this a medical device? Like, I probably don't want to ask him about it if it's like a... a like you thought it was like heart. attached to one of his organs or some shit. Right. Like, like he could be diabetic or he could be, um, it could be a heart monitor or something like that. So it I didn't want to be rude. Stuff. But I mean, he, he was our age and he looked healthy. And um, so after a drink which is really good, by the way, it was like, a, it was a, a dyed gin that was purple from pea flowers. It was really weird. But um, after that one drink, I was like, hey, <laughs> I don't even know, remember how I said it or what, but I was just kind of like got into conversation. And then basically just asked him outright, like, what is that that you're wearing? It's not a shuffle. It's not a music device. Because I noticed that it had wires. There wasn't any, um, you know, anything going to his ears. And then he had these wristbands on. And um, yeah, he's just wearing it. So he said, it's a microcurrent device that delivers frequencies to your body in real time. I was like, this can't be a coincidence, number one. Number two, I want to try it. <laughs> so basically, I think he felt all of that. And he's like, do you want to try it? I'm like, yeah, sure. So I put it on. Each treatment's like 30 minutes to an hour. And the one that I decided to do was energy. And immediately I felt this rush of energy through my body. Well, I shouldn't say immediately. After about 10 minutes in, I started to feel this like shoot of energy from my spine, up my spine, up my back, down my arms. And it was like, like it was pretty intense. And so I, I just was kind of quiet about it, but also not because I'm not very, I'm not a very quiet person and I don't really hold things back too much. So I was like, holy shit, you know, but then like kind of chill too. Um, I let the treatment go. And then by the time it was done, it was probably the wrong program to run on a plane because I'm sitting in a seat and all I want to do now is like, just get up. Like I could have, I could have ran, I could have like gone to the gym or like it was that kind of energy. Yeah cough like anxious energy uh so then melissa ran a program after me she ran pure which uh energy and pure are in the gold it's like the gold programs which no, nuno nina um the hundred and forty four thousand frequencies that he came up with um are in eight different programs within the gold frequency package um and it's kind of like the beginning to, to frequencies for your body. So Peter was like, yeah, this is always kind of the good place to start because they're, they're pretty generic in a sense that, you know, energy or relax or pure or release. These are kind of programs that anybody could basically run at any time. Um, so Melissa ran pure and then she was like, oh, I didn't really feel anything. The next day, so after the flight, it was a really short flight. I don't know if, if you know from like uh, Brisbane to Melbourne, it's like 40 minutes, 45 minutes or something. Maybe it was a little bit longer, but it was a short flight. Yeah, it had to be longer because we both ran programs. But um, so we get to our friend's house. We have dinner. We go to sleep. We wake up. And Melissa wakes up and she's like, feels like she has a hangover. 
but we didn't drink the night before. We had a couple of drinks on the plane and with dinner, like maybe a glass of wine, but it's not like we partied hard or anything. And she remembered running that pure program. And then we read about the pure program and it's basically a detox program. Mm. So the interesting thing was like the energy I felt right away, but the pure Melissa felt like the next day because it took a while for her body to go into that like detox state. And we've done lots of detoxes, so we know what those feel like. And that's what it kind of felt like to her. So this was March of 2020. We tried that. That happened. We traveled Australia for a month. And as we're traveling through Australia, all of the tickets that we bought six months in advance was like, the only word I can use to describe it is synchronicity because it's like it all happened like it was supposed to happen. Obviously, COVID just started, right? COVID was starting to hit land. And as we were flying through the different states in Australia, the day that we flew or the next day after we flew every single time for that month, that city or that state closed. Mm -hmm. And we had bought these tickets six months in advance. So we weren't scrambling to get out of there. We weren't stressed because it was like all of this was happening behind us. Like we were on this wave riding it and there's nothing that we had to do because everything was pre-planned and everything just worked out. Well, hold on. You think that that has something to do with the healing? I think, I think to me it's, I follow signs that happen and I don't look at anything as a coincidence. I think that things happen for a reason and I guess that's my belief in life. And when things are so blatant like that to me, I can hardly ignore it. So like meeting Peter on the plane and then me having to have a physics degree in energy and resonance science like that to me is not a coincidence. Us booking the plane tickets and then as we're leaving these states, you know, we left Brisbane and then it shut down, then we'd leave Melbourne and then it shut down, then we'd leave Sydney and then it would shut down. And then we went back to Brisbane and it was shutting down and then we had to fly home April 1st. Um, so all of this to say that I think it, it was the beginning for me to realize that not only do things happen for a reason, but I think that we also have an influence with our energy on our environment around us. And now having this device for two years, I can honestly say that it does something to my energy that is for the better, especially in this day and age when almost everything that we do in our daily life in a Westerner's point of view takes from our energy, right? Like we get in a car and we're stuck in traffic. No matter what, no matter how positive you are, if you get like three red lights in a row and then you're stuck in traffic and then you smell the exhaust of another car, you're just kind of like, man, this sucks. Those thoughts get put out there, that's energy, because we know that's energy. Those feelings get put out there, that's energy. So this device to me is like you come back home and then you recharge, you get your energy back, and beyond that, it has the capability to scan your energy in real time. With this inside, there's a quantum sensor that scans your energy in real time and then is able to access all the programs that you have and then tell you which program you need to run right now. Then once you run that program, the actual program when it, in and of itself has a select uh, group of frequencies that are in there. And as it's scanning your energy in real time, it's giving you the frequencies that you need in that moment. 
So not only does it hone in on which program to run, within that program is the select frequencies for that program. And then in real time, it's delivering those frequencies to you. So like right now, I'm running coherence. And there's eight minutes left. And it's running these frequencies because the quantum sensor is telling the program which frequencies to run in real time. So to me, the technology, if you look, um, if you look up vibrational healing or music healing or sound healing um, or even frequency therapy, it dates back to thousands of years that we talked about before, but frequency therapy has been around since the 1800s. And if you can imagine what those analog devices looked like, they were, they look like a supercomputer used to look like. In a big room, they'd have, you know, cables for all the frequencies, and then you'd hook the frequency up to yourself. And they were just kind of trying to figure out which ones worked and which ones didn't. There's a lot of research that's been done and a lot of different scientists that have um, done frequency therapy in the past, but it's up until now that we have smartphones that we can deliver all of them to your body with a tiny little device like this. And to me, that that's where this is taking it to a whole nother level of portability and ease of use. So that's my story. And I'm, sticking in, I'm sticking to it. So in a nutshell, uh, I mean, the Healy device. So, so David's been working with this uh, Healy for what, like two years now, right? And, yeah. Um, you know, yeah, I didn't finish that, that we bought it in May when we came back. So yeah. after our whole trip, we came back to the US and bought it. So were you like skeptical when you actually purchased it? Of course. Okay. I'm always skeptical. I'm a, I am, I am a curious questions asking person always, no matter what, even if someone comes up and tells me, Hey, the sky is blue. I'm like, is it really, let me do a little Google research. Let me find out. <laughs> or why is it blue? You why know what I mean? Sky blue. Yeah. And that's actually a fun little rabbit hole in and of itself. Why this guy is blue, you know? I've been down there. I forget what it what the reasoning is. Do you remember? Or no? Yeah, I think it's something about the sun's Spectrum. reflection off oh, of the yeah. atmospheric particles make yeah. it blue. Yeah. I could have butchered that, but you know, you can Google it, and it'll be a fun little rabbit hole for you. And then you could tell us again because I've forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, so you were skeptical when you bought it, and then how long? before you you were sold on you were like this is legit like was it weeks was it a couple of days was it months well for the, from the first time that i used it i was sold and then even the second third and fourth as i was using it i was blown away by how accurate it was by that i mean when you run the, the, the program to, uh, it's called resonance, when you run the resonance program to find out which program your body needs right now, to me, every time that it would suggest the program, it was really spot on. So like I'd get back from the gym and it would say run the muscle program or run the regeneration program, which is the fitness program set that is available. Um, if I like, <laughs> this one's kind of funny, but like anytime me and Melissa get out of the shower, a lot of times the beauty program comes up. It's like you're taking care of your skin, hair and nails kind of thing. I'm like, oh, that kind of makes sense. Um, a, a ton of times where I've had issues with my stomach, gastrointestinal program has come up. And if you lay down and you've got an upset stomach with that, it will be relieved in 20 minutes. Like I've run the pain programs when I've had pain in my back. Um, I've run the pain programs on my mom's boyfriend who has sciatica. And after three times of running it, he was like jumping up and down and, and like doing forward bends. And he's like, holy crap, what is this? Um, 
I will say, you know, it does take some effort because it's an app and you have to learn it. And as you kind of learn what works best for you and how to use it in your life, to me, it's just another tool to, for wellness, which, you know, we're in this day and age where everyone's being prescribed tons of pills and eating super processed, unhealthy foods. And even the water that's coming out of the tap, like we were talking about yesterday, you know, is not good for you. So at the end of the day, to me, that's all energy. And to me, this is giving you energy. So, okay. So, so it took you like a little while to run through it and like really be like, okay, this is, well, but you said on your first day, you were like, okay, this is like legit. So, but then you, you kept using it and then it was just like on point after one day after another, you're saying. Yeah. I just, I feel like the, my nature is to be skeptical. So the other part is you start using it and then it's working and you're like, am I like just making myself think that it's working? You know, like, am I just like, this must be just me saying that it's working. And after two years, I don't even question it anymore. Like I just use it. And now I've, I figured out like how it works best for me in my daily life, you know? So, so anyway, so you, you, you had it for the past two years uh, well, how long about like a month ago maybe i got mine we yeah were talking about it and and yeah and um and, and and i just thought about this while you were talking that you have always been i mean you grew up in in washington state you were always out in like the wilderness right you were in the in the, in the woods and playing around outside you're a nature guy right ever since True. i lived, you always wanted like right now the by the way, David wanted to do all this on his cell phone so he could be out in parks and whatever. <laughs> it just didn't work out. He's still working on that, but he's on, he's in his back there and you can see trees because that's how you are. So what I'm saying with that is that I feel as though, and I just, well, like I said, I just realized this while you were talking, is that you are more of, probably because of your experiences and w- w- with whatever you've done in your life, you know, even psychedelics and all kinds of other stuff and, and you being very connected to nature, you've always been probably more aware, self-aware than most maybe and connected to nature, right? Maybe. Say yes. Well, I don't, I, I really try not to ever compare myself to anybody else. That's kind of like a, a motto for me. So it, it well, always. Okay, okay. So, so but I get what you're saying. Like I would never, are, I would never say, "Oh, I am like," because I was raised in the woods. No, no, I no. no you're the to tree. the point. So, so just you're agreeing, right? Like this, this is kind of how it, how is, you it is. My experience, for sure, one hundred percent. It's my experience that you know I was raised, and I had an open forest to run in my entire youth. I was also raised by parents who we had like a book in the kitchen that was called natural healing. And anytime like we had a, like a headache or a stomach ache, there was like a remedy for that. And my dad would like blend it up in the blender. We had a juicer, we had a blender. We always, like, I never had, I should say never soda for us or Pepsi or Coke was always like a really big treat. And it was never anything that I had on the regular. So I had water and milk and natural food. My mom cooked a lot. So that is my experience. Yes. Right. So, I mean, my whole point here is so comparing it, me and you, our experience with it, because I'm going to get into to my experience with it so far. Um, but someone like you who is already very aware, connected, aware of all these frequencies, schooling of frequencies, all this other stuff. For someone like you, a device like this may, you may connect to it a lot, maybe faster and and be aware of all the subtleties 
that are happening with this because you're so in touch with how you feel and, and, you know, going through detoxes and all of those stuff. Right now, well, and also being a performer, like, so that's what I was right. doing in Australia. Very physically fit. And it's all about using your energy and, you know, yeah. Yeah. And then being in front of people and like feeling their energy and like giving out energy to on stage and stuff like that. So you have, I think you have a lot of experiences that make this a very ideal thing for you. So, and I'm not saying that you have to be that type of person to use this. What I'm saying is I come from a little bit different background. Like, I mean, I also ate pretty healthy growing up. We didn't have soda really a lot either. Candy. I didn't, I'm not, I didn't, I don't have a sweet tooth, things like that. Um, you know, I was outside as well. We didn't have like the, the, the these like, immense like forest to run through like like you know you guys probably had like the the redwood forest and shit like that out there right you know and so you were out i mean it nature. wasn't a redwood forest evergreen forest yeah but like <laughs> Close you, enough. You know, yeah you also did a lot of like camping too right and, and, and travel so tons yeah i was not so much like that but we did have like a lake house so mine was like in my mind, as far as like nature stuff and being connected to the earth, I didn't really connect to that until I actually met you really when we went to college together for sound engineering at Full Sail. Yeah. Um, but prior to that, like you helped me connect all that stuff, I think. And um, what I'm trying to say is like, I think for someone like you, you get this device and you're like, holy shit, this is what I've been like missing all my life. And someone like me, I'm like, skeptical just like you and i bought it because i am constantly trying to better myself my health my my mind you know my capacity to manage stress all these things right so you know talking to you over the years and and watching you go through this experience with this i was like okay maybe this is time it's time to do this let's and then we start talking about this like podcast thing where we're just going to talk about this and then have like people on and experience the, the, the device themselves and kind of give us their uh, aspect on it. And, um, and, and so my experience with it over the past month has been probably not as uh, accurate and just like, this is the one thing in life. Like I've had moments with this where I'm like, Oh, okay. There's something there. There's definitely something there, but I'm still getting to, I guess, know myself and the frequencies that I'm emitting and things that are coming in. And I'm, I'm slowly starting to figure that out through this. And that's also another process that you go through when you begin to meditate on a regular basis too. Right. right? Because you're like quieting everything down and just like, zenning out um so it's just you're either like bugging out in your mind or you're bringing it back and being aware of all of these things that are happening and that's kind of like the calm side of it um so this is a sim similar to that except it's like for me it's like an overwhelming overload of like because there's so many programs and i i think i like most people uh, would just like something that would be like, okay, you clip this on, you put them, the things on, you press the scan button, it tells you exactly what to do. And I think that's where this thing wants to be. It's not exactly there yet, but it's very, it's getting close. It's a little, I would say a little, I think you've used the word like clunky because it's only been around for about a, what, a year and a half, two years now. Like you, you got on like, right when it started like that guy just got yeah it was your, just got it when you got it yeah it was well two things i want to go back a second because um uh you said for a person that you know you particularly you said this is now making you more aware of the energy that you're emitting and and maybe what you need and to me going back to what i said earlier that's what i think this is it's it's bridging that gap of of yeah. westerners convenience 
and that ancient knowledge that we know we are energy. So, so we are energy. And then now science is saying we are energy. And our Western mind though is like, no, that can't do that. I need to take a pill to feel better or no, that can't do that. Like that doesn't make sense. My doctor didn't prescribe it or no, that doesn't make, you know, and I feel like you already are experiencing what I was experiencing when I first started it too. And that yeah. it's like, yeah, now you are aware that it's giving you some kind of thing. It's something is happening, but then you're also made aware that, oh, if it's giving me this kind of energy, these frequencies, then I'm also probably emitting certain frequencies as well. And just that awareness is the beginning to me mm. of the change that can be made within within everyone and then communities and then really the world. I know that sounds like kind of hokey, but if we all were to be made aware that we are energy and if we all knew how how to control that energy in a way that could benefit everybody, we would be living in a different world right now. Mm -hmm. Like I drive down the freeway and people don't even use their freaking blinkers. Like they don't even care about other people. They're not aware of well, they, other I think, people. I think everybody does care, but you, like you said, they're not aware. They, aware. They're not thinking that the car that they just cut off could have a kid in the back seat or whatever. They're just, they're on their own, which I don't blame anybody for that. You know, it's just, uh, it's, it's when you finally realize that we're all like connected and yeah, maybe this guy like flicked you off or something, but he's probably got his problems and his day went sideways because of whatever, like, and you start thinking about things from a different perspective you realize that we're all connected and how are we connected through energy, right? 100%. That it, it boils down to me to energy every single day. And I feel like it took me two years <laughs> of skepticism and aha moments with this device to have that, that like, remember I called you and I was like a crazy person. I was like, I, everything is energy, man. Everything. I'm like, seriously, everything is energy. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, okay. And I said that to Melissa too. I, it sounds crazy and, and it also sounds really rudimentary and simple, but the, the uh, aha moment for me was really like, if everything truly is energy, then everything that I do is my energy. So how can I maximize that? How can I really enjoy what I love doing all the time because that is my energy expending. Like when you look at so many people in this nine to five cycle, which I will say COVID was like a massive pattern interrupt, right? There was like a, everybody's going to work nine to five and that's just what you do. And that's what you have to do. You go to school to get that job, to work for that company that then you retire after X amount of years and that's just is what it is. But now we're looking, we're seeing those 60 and 70 year old people retiring and they're going back to work because that company wasn't loyal to them because they fired them right before they got their retirement. And that's what it's all about. The bottom line always, if they can hire somebody that to work for cheaper and that's the way that businesses operate and that's the world we live in. So how do we create a new way. And to me, the, that aha moment was about energy that if I go and do something with myself, with my energy, with my thoughts and feelings and everything that I bring, how can I bring that all together and really have more control over it than say, just stepping out the door thinking that I have no control over life. I have no control over my energy. Therefore, everything is happening to me. Hmm. And to me, those are two completely different perspectives, right? Like I walk out the door and I can control how my day goes because I'm thinking consciously about it. I'm acting on it. And everybody and everything that comes into my path, I am deciding to interact or not because it's either going to benefit my energy or not. And 
as opposed to walking out the door and, oh, this just happened to me. It was awful. And then now this is happening to me. And now this is awful. And now I have to go to work and I don't like it, but I have to do it. And then I'm going to drive home in traffic and I don't really like this either, but it's happening to me. It's all happening to me and I have no control over it. And I hear that a lot with people. And I feel like just you saying alone that in your first month, you're already having awareness about your energy. That to me is what it was about for me. Mm. Awareness of energy, that I am energy, that I have energy and that my energy is worth something too. Now, I was always, I was always like aware of that part of it, but as far as like, because because there's so many different programs that you can run, uh, like, and then within each of those programs, there's all these little, there's these other sub programs or whatever, um, that I, there was, there's some stuff that you don't realize, but like, like, for example, um, I have back issues. I had originally kind of broke it down to, you know, uh, when I had my daughter, I was like holding her so much and like, I wouldn't put her down until she fell asleep. And like, I knew that I was like fucking my back up. So I think it's part of that. But then also I was very stressed out at that time too. Right. Uh, having a newborn, you know, work and, you know, getting married and stuff like that. And, um, and, and, and what I realized through this device is that I now hold my stress back there. Right. And then there's a, there's a, a program in here called uh, acute stress, I believe. And, and then it tells you literally to put those, the sticky pad things where these things connect between your shoulder blades, exactly where my back is fucking killing me all the time. I also blamed it on my bed, which I need a new bed too. So there's, I think it's a combination of things. It's like, it's like, yeah, me holding my daughter for hours at a time two years ago didn't help my back. And the bed probably doesn't help my back either. Cause I probably need a new particular bed for my back. But the, probably the main thing is like stress, right? And stress is probably more along of an energy thing. And anyways, I, I ran it. A f I've run it a few times and yeah, my back's pretty good. Um, now it sucked last week. Um, so, but my back has been better and worse at times too. And I've like done things and I've like got massages and it goes away. So like, there's that part of it too, where I'm like, all right, but I think it's like a hybrid of everything. I, like you said, this is like a tool to enhance and can help, but it's not like a, something that's just going to take away all your pain. Like you have what it, the awareness comes in where like, say you do have some sort of, um, uh, what's, what's it, what you mentioned it before your, your, uh, sciatica, sciatica, right? A lot of people have a sciatica, right? But where does that really actually stem from, right? Uh, does it is it because you like lifted something up physically and you fucked up your back, or were you already you know do you carry your stress back there? There's all these different layers that can add to it, and you need to take care of each layer, including the energy and frequency that is being held in certain parts of your body, right? Um, for example. My, my, my buddy just hit me up the other day and he's telling me that he's got, um, you know, uh, a, a, a tumor on his adrenal gland. Right. So, and then the doctor's tell, telling him what he, cause he's like, where, where did I get this from? How does this just happen? Right. And the doctor's literally like, well, these, you know, these things just happen. We don't know, but I do know that this is the doctor talking the doctor's like, I do know that you know, you have a small tumor on the adrenal gland, which is increasing your uh, cortisol levels, which is creating anxiety for you. And of course, my friend's like, oh my God, that's why I have anxiety. But I know that this person is a highly stressed person <laughs> since we were kids. And it's probably in reverse. Stress 
uh, induced uh, tumor, essentially. Mm -hmm. Like you can be so stressed out and hold your stress in certain areas, right? And your adrenal gland actually is what is regulating your stress levels in your body, right? So (laughs) you could be so stressed out, you could start actually mutating cells in your body to create a tumor, which then creates you know, an excessive level of cortisol in your body. And then you have the anxiety, but it's it's really like the anxiety was first, the stress was first, and then created all these problems. Now he's got a tumor, he's going to get surgery and stuff. Right. But there's, there's a way that that could have been prevented, I think, via energy um, in awareness. Do you get what I'm saying here real quick? 100%. I'm with you 100%. I mean, obviously, this gets into uh, a topic that I think are can be un- uncomfortable for a lot of people or um, mostly just maybe because they've never heard of alternative health, you know? Or they and, hear that and they're, they're like, oh, yeah, that's some like holistic hippie shit, you know? Right, which is interesting to me because everything used to be holistic and alternative medicine until the Rockefellers came in and invented pharmaceutical, the the pharmaceutical industry. So, which you can look up, you know, the Flexner report that happened in the 1920s, which eradicated all of alternative medicine and holistic healing, which used to be the norm. It was never normal to have um, pills being crammed down our throats for every ailment. And I will also say that every pill is derived from some plant, right? um, right. which we used to take before. So, but the problem with plants is you can't patent them and you can't make a trillion dollar industry off of it. And you can't keep people sick to keep putting money in your pocket. So to me, that's, that's my perspective and that's what I see. So I'm 100% on board with you, but it's I'm obviously yeah. about like uh, convenient things, uh, the convenience of anything, right? Because people will be like, oh, so I could go this holistic route and start changing my diet and do whatever and, and, and maybe start meditating and doing all these other things. But that takes too much time. Instead, I can just take this pill and it'll all go away. But every time you take the pill, there's some sort of repercussion to that, most like most of the time. Even if you take uh, antibiotics, you know, now, before even antibiotics, before we were like, okay, antibiotics is a natural thing, it's a, you know, fungus that goes in and kills off all the bad, bad, but it also kills off all the good shit too. So, like, there is most pills don't have just do nothing except for attack the problem. Right. Um, uh, hemp does marijuana does because because you have uh, endo uh, receptors, endocannabinoid receptors in your body that match directly with the cannabinoids. Um, but most other pills don't. They, they, they're going to do something else to you, whether it's today or 10 years from now or 30 years from now. If you continuously take these things, it's going to build up some sort of toxin in your body and you're going to have to get rid of that somehow. And there's going to be another problem with surgery or whatever the fuck it is. Um, so anyways, this is the convenience of that that has transformed our whole medical industry now and everybody just looks for the convenience like people watch these commercials and it's like they don't even hear what the fuck the, they're saying. Like with all like the side effects and shit. One of them I heard I was it was like could cause like uh freaking uh, what was it mental suicidal like, thoughts and suicidal death. Suicidal thoughts. Yeah, I'm like I'm not taking that. I don't give a fuck what that shit does. <laughs> well, you know? I will say I will say just as an aside and just as a disclaimer, I think that there is a place for Western medicine for sure. Like. My dad was a um, EMT and without a lot of the trauma care that we have in place for Western medicine, people would be dead. You know, there are lots of medications and lots of um, IV drips and things that we can do if you've been in an accident and you're bleeding to death and you need to stop it and, you know, coagulators. There's so many things out there that are of use in Western medicine. I'm not saying I'm all like, hippy dippy. And if I chop off my leg, I'm just going to like rub a, 
a butt on there and then it's going to be all good. Like I'm going to go to the hospital, but yeah, it's like, um, it's that it, it should be utilized for emergency type of stuff or th things that have gotten out of control. So say you chronic have, illness, like right. stage four cancer and you haven't been aware of it, you didn't know it. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, something starts happening in your body. Okay. Well, this holistic shit isn't going to work right away or at all. And, and that's the other side of it. So, you know, bringing your buddy back into this and what you just said, the other side is if you do holistic and alternative healthcare as a daily practice, mm -hmm. you won't get to that point where you have a tumor on your adrenal gland. And that may yeah. or may not be true, but you know, like you know this guy and I also know lots of people who have very unhealthy habits that they are unaware of or are too lazy to want to implement something else in their life that they know is better for them. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like this is something you can do every day to check in with yourself and see what's going on. And it's going to deliver frequencies to help get you back in balance. If you are, if you are all energy and this is energy giving you energy, it's only going to bring you back into balance, which if you're out of balance for a long time, physical things in your body will manifest, mm. you know, whether it's anxiety or stress or something worse, like a tumor, something will manifest in the body. If you are out of, out of balance for a long time, I don't know if you've ever heard of somebody breaking up disease, you know, when you have a disease, it's disease, you're out of balance. Mm. And that's what this is all about is bringing your bioenergetic body your the electricity the energy of your body back into balance um and every single day it's being thrown out of balance whether we like it or not like as as zen as i try to be as good as i try and eat as soon as i leave the door you don't have control over everything you know right. you only have control over how you act and react to it so i choose to have a practice that's every day that's holistic and check in with myself. And I think that it's important for us to bring ourselves back into balance if we are out of balance. And a lot of times we don't even know we're out of balance. Right. That's, that's the thing, right? That's the awareness, right? And this is what I'm talking about. So like, this is come full circle now. Like someone like you has been through, unique experiences in life and of how where you've traveled how you were raised all these other things which makes it a little bit easier for you to be more aware of certain things right off the rip right so i don't know what i'm trying to say i'm just trying to say that like uh i would say you know this this is for everyone everybody can benefit from this everybody no matter what your thoughts are on holistic medicine or whatever, right? But I would say most are not going to um, attempt to uh, aren't going to resonate with it at first because 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 of just the skepticism and whatever, right? And that's okay. That's okay too because. Peter ran into you on a plane, right? <laughs> like you guys actually physically connected. You had a good conversation. You understood what the device did. You tried it for yourself. And then it changed your, your thoughts on this, right? That can happen for anybody. Um, so I don't know where I was trying to go with this, but I, I'm just saying like, you know, the, 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 the person that goes to the doctors multiple times a year, they, they, you know, maybe don't eat all organic. They don't really work out. Um, they're not going to even listen to this podcast first off, right? <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. And if that, they do, then they're going to be that. very skeptical. But I don't even know what I'm trying to say. I'm just trying to say that, you know, not everybody is going to initially jump on board with this. And that's okay because there are people like this you. This is that are talking and this about is a journey that we're putting out there. That's why for David and I, we've discussed this. This is like 
a long term. This is like the rest of our lives thing right now. Like we'd be happy that in 50 years when we're fucking whatever, 90 years old, 25, <laughs> uh, that there's, we even walk by somebody that's just wearing a Healy, you know, and we're just like walking with our canes, like, you know, and we're like, Hey, that's cool. Maybe we helped facilitate somebody's mind towards wanting to get one of those. Um, but anyways, and let me get back to So clearly I'm far more skeptical about this than David, right? And I mean, don't get me wrong. I was there two years ago. Trust me. That, that's why we have chosen to do this because I waited for a long time to like come out of the Healy closet, I guess you would say, you know, because this is like, I mean, I'm, me and my wife have been doing this for two years and we've told a few people, some of our family members have been using it. And um, it's just like one of those things, like, is this really working? Like, do I want to tell people that this is what we're doing? Like, and at this point, I'm like, it's helped me so much that I just, I want, I want to see how other people um, react and, and act with it in, and I feel like for you now that you're on this journey, this is a perfect time to do this podcast because we are on a journey. It's a project. It's a frequency project that we are running. And yeah. we are putting our energy out there into the ether and people are either picking up on it or not picking up on it. And that's what frequency is. <laughs> so it's right. a project and it's what we're doing. I'm actually, I think there's a good... I'm actually running energy because I just did the scan and it told me that I need energy right now. Oh my God. I don't know why. Right after talking about it. But like... Those are the kinds know. of things that happen every single day when you start using this. Like, right. So, it so not only is... happens with the programs, it happens in your life. You like say, oh, you know, babe, I was... Uh, I should probably call Joe and then the phone will ring and it's Joe. Like that shit happens in my life every day, all day. And it happens more and more since this has come into my life because I've discovered it's almost like the secret, like that you are energy and you're attracting what you put out there. Anyway, that's right. a whole nother one. I feel like we should start wrapping up because it's been an hour. <laughs> okay. You know, I don't know. It, for me, it's, I think it's definitely, it's a, it's like up there on the high end of like the tools that you have in your toolbox to like keep yourself healthy on a regular basis and in a preventative health manner. Right. So, so there's like, you know, eating organic and healthy, right. Consuming, uh, like water without fluoride. Um, and, it, you know, what else? Or just even filtered water in general, you know, right. just basic Brita filtered water like exercising and then, you know, um, just, I mean, the, 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 you know, the list goes on of what you can do on a regular basis to prevent things. And what I, I've realized through like the COVID thing is like, man, you know, you and I, we don't get any kind of fucking prize for doing all this shit we do all the time. But if like, uh, uh, um, you know, a pharmaceutical company comes out with this drug that like works 70% of the time. And then there's like 80,000 side effects. They're like, everybody loves it. And, and it's the greatest thing. And I'm like, motherfuckers, I'm working every goddamn day because I'm thinking about when I'm going to be fucking 80 and I'm 42 now. So I need to do something every single fucking day. Like I was explaining to uh, my wife that because she's like, you know, you, you just kind of think a little bit differently than than some people. And like, you you know, uh, you got more motivation or whatever. I'm like, bro, I don't fucking want to go to the gym. Every, every time you see me walk out the door to go fucking work out, you think I want to? You think I'm like, oh my God, yeah, let's do this. No, in my mind, I've already just locked it in. Like, you better go fucking do this or you're going to be a piece of fucking shit physically. <laughs> you know you're gonna feel like fucking shit you know this is my own fucking mind i have my mind is constantly talking to itself i'm crazy but it's already locked in like hey if this is the goal that 
you want to be healthy when you're, um, you know, 70, 80 years old because you're an older parent and you want, and I'm talking about Joe, me, I want to uh, be hanging out with my kid when she's 20, 30 years old and like traveling and doing things physically, like activities and stuff like that then this is what I got to fucking do. I have to do this whole fucking laundry list list of shit on a daily, weekly, monthly basis for the rest of my fucking life. And that's just it. That's just life. So this has become part of that regimen. And maybe five years from now, there'll be some something else that I'm just going to add to the fucking toolbox to get to that goal, Right. Yeah, I mean, it's it sounds like the thing that we have in common is the willingness to the willingness to um, help ourselves, you know, and also there is a I think we talk about this a lot is the responsibility piece for ourself is is huge that in that taking responsibility that what I do today is going to either make me better or worse. Every decision that I make is going to either make me better or worse. So I, I don't necessarily put things in a good or bad or um, I do think like you and that, you know, I do have a list of things that I keep up on so that I feel my my best. You know, the day that I can't go out and go skiing or kayaking or running or swimming or doing the things that I really love to do, which I feel like, you know, most humans enjoy running and swimming and or just just being out, you know, being able to walk freely and not be in pain or depressed or sad. Um, and all those things can help you be better. And they do take uh, effort and they take time out of your day and it's all a choice mm. you know am i going to sit and play video games for six hours or could i play guitar go for a run the gym and cook a wholesome dinner in six hours you know unless I, I, you're like you know playing video games and you're like that's your job and you're like making money off it i guess then you right know. some people do so for the six hours that's your job and then go do right it. It's like, uh, I think a lot of the things that people do that are um, time consuming, that are not focused on themselves is escapism, whether it's TV, video games, even if it's like just talking shit on the phone for an hour to you, your buddy or whatever, it's all you're just avoiding the time with yourself to better yourself mentally, physically, however, like that's. And that's a, the part of the reason why a lot of people avoid even the thought of like having to meditate, you know, it's like almost, they wouldn't probably say it's scary, but it probably is like being they, alone with your own thoughts. If yeah. you don't have control over them can be scary for sure. Right. And there's or, so much stuff overloading our, our, our stimulation, you know, everywhere. You just like anywhere you go grocery store if you just drive down the fucking road there's like billboards there's fucking you know all kinds of shit and you can easily escape clearly escape your whole life watching the world go round right and uh you know i think david and i just choose not to do that like both of us we don't watch tv um, if we watch things, we watch movies, but they're usually documentaries. Um, I mean, I think there's a time and a place for escapism. Like if you've been working really hard all week long on your stuff, whether it's your business, your health, your whatever it is. I mean, this is just my opinion, but like if everybody, I think everybody can agree that if they look at themselves there, they'd be like, yes, I want to better myself. And then this many, this much time, however it is, five years, one year, 10 years, I would like to be doing other things. And they look at people like traveling on yachts and stuff like that. And they're like, I want to do that. I, that's great. That looks amazing. Well, get to fucking work, get to fucking work every fucking second of your day. That's how you get that shit, you know, and you got to 
put those goals up here and you got to see the laundry list of shit to achieve that fucking goal. And, and it takes forever and it takes time and everything's fucking hard. That's it. That's it. That's the mentality you have to fucking have. <laughs> and then just be like, fuck yeah about it. Be like, yes. Everything's fucking hard. Fuck yeah. Well, I mean, I know you, I feel like you're coming across very, very harsh right now. Am I? But I also, I also will say I agree with you on a lot of things. And I remember when I was having a bit of a, a meltdown myself, um, you know, COVID had lasted a lot longer than we wanted. And did you have the Healy then? I was just thinking about that. Yeah, yeah, we did. You did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like there's a lot of things the last couple of years have been really, really hard. If I, if I were to focus on the hard things, I guess is my point, then I would never get to the good stuff. But um, I did have a little breakdown and I called you when I had that breakdown and you said owning a business is hard. And what did you say? You were like, you just have, he said Let's something agree. like you have to find out how to love the shit. Uh, love the shit. Yeah. Something like that. And I was like, at that, literally that was That's what I said. You love. Yeah. Love the process. Love like that. Not everything is always great and pleasant, but if you're working towards something um, that you want in life, then you have to find ways to work through the hard stuff. And to me that, that rolls down to perspective, right? Like mm -hmm. when you go to the gym and you don't really want to go to the gym, it's not every day that you don't want to go to the gym. It's just that you're having yourself, you're, you're, making a pact with yourself to go to the gym and do something for yourself because you know in the long run you want to be healthy and be throwing soul up still is is as long as you can mm -hmm. and that's a goal and that's the light and that's that's what you get to focus on yeah but not every day is that every day you know there may be a week stretch there where you're like god i don't want to do this but you know that the back pains come back the aches and pains come back and so it's just, um, I don't know what I'm trying to say either. Just yeah, I think you get the harshness of that I said it. Like, listen, I don't live my life like, oh, fuck, everything's hard. I know you don't because I know you well, but you're coming across that well, way. And that's what I'm the only reason that I say that is because in actuality, it is. <laughs> but because I've just... I just love, I love every moment, the process, the, like, be, when I, when I say everything's hard, because when I, when I do things and, and maybe people look at us and they're like, oh, look at this guy, he's living in Florida. And little, I used to get that shit all the time. When we lived in Miami, people, cause I'd be like, yeah, the dolphins in my backyard, this is fucking great. They'd be like, oh, it's easy for you. And I'm like, no, it's not easy for me. It was very, extremely hard to get to this point. <laughs> Actually, yeah, yeah. <laughs> every day I just don't focus on it, but yeah. because I'm okay with every day being like that is why I get to enjoy these moments like this. You know what I'm saying? So, um, it's everything is hard, but at some point when you overcome that and, 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 and embrace that and love the process of every day and all the things that it takes to get to your goals, then it just becomes normal and you're happy and you love it, right? So um, that's what I was trying to get at. Sorry if I made it seem as though life is just hard and you're never going to figure it out. <laughs> 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 the, uh, the healing will help you feel. No, I mean, I, I think it's, yeah, that's true. But I mean, there is there is a good balance between you and me because I do sometimes drift into the, everything is positive all the time world, even mm -hmm. though real talk, it's, I know it's not, but it's, it's how I get through things. And I think that the more real you are with everything, you know, that's when things become honest. And mm -hmm. if you're honest about where you're at, then you can um, more accurately project where you want to be and how to get there. I think um, if if anyone is aware of Abraham Hicks, he has a a wheel, 
and it, it really helped me um, in my 20s because it was the first time I ever heard of somebody basically saying, be okay with where you're at and be realistic about where you're going. Because if you're not okay with where you're at and you're not realistic about where you're going and you're like, I want that yacht, <laughs> but you're not, you know what I mean? Like, okay, you want the yacht. So you're going to be unhappy every day if you don't have the yacht. And to get there, what are you doing to get there? Where's the realistic part about that? You know, and like you're saying, if you want the yacht, <laughs> it's going to be really hard to yeah. get it, but you're, you'll get it. Um, I don't want a yacht. I just want to be on someone's yacht. <laughs> right. That's that's an actual smart way to think about it, right? Just hang out. Maybe rent it for the day. Have a party. Um. Anyway, yeah, it's not about it's not about, it's about the experiences, right? It's about the the moments and just you know. I don't know. Money's also energy, right? That's a whole nother rabbit hole. It has been an hour and 21 minutes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking like we got to, yeah. we should break because this is our first podcast. I feel like we've covered a lot of stuff and I would love for people to keep coming back and really be interested in where we're going in this journey and also invite people to message us. And, you know, if you want to be in on this conversation and talk about it and ask questions or whatever, I want this to be completely open and and mm. allow for space for us to have conversation. I don't want anyone ever to feel like we're going on. Oh, there's guys are going on live again and talking at us. I don't yeah. ever want to feel like that. I don't want to ever make anyone feel like that. I, I want this to be an open, completely open community building experience because okay. energy and frequency to me is a, topic i think we're both passionate about coming from the sound engineer perspective and more and we have a lot to cover yeah i think uh we're you know as time goes on it'll be really cool because you know anybody that is because currently right now as far as the healy goes it's like difficult to really get a lot of information about it in the united states right now even on youtube or whatever but this will be nice because we'll create a, an area where people can actually come on here and ask us like, does it do this? Does it do that? How does this work? Blah, 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 blah. You know, live right here and we can answer them. Um, as time goes on, obviously, as we, we build the, the, the group and stuff like that. But um, yeah, listen, I don't care. We can, we can talk. I mean, I'm, I'm basically limited by my daughter on some days <laughs> in the afternoons, but uh listen i'll have five hour long podcasts who cares we can we could chop it up we could do whatever we want you know we don't have to post the whole thing or we can post the whole thing or we could post parts of it or we can do whatever the fuck we want it doesn't fucking matter true. It's not, true, it's true. Not a frequency project right um so so yeah i mean i know i know you said you, you only have so much time today so we can get going um but yeah we'd like to do this on a fairly regular basis um you know, we're, we're going to start a group, right? Well, how I about I got, I got 13 minutes. Oh, you got 13 minutes left? Okay. Yeah. I'm getting ready for the gym. I have 39 <laughs> minutes. Um, but yeah, let's just really quickly explain what we want to do. Uh, there's a few things we're trying still trying to like figure out, like, like um, we want to do a group or do we want to do like a page? I don't know. What the yeah, no, I, I created a Facebook group. Um, so you already did it? Yeah. So Can you find it in there now? I think we could drop it in the video make, maybe every time so we can get people to join the group if they're interested. And then maybe through the group, we let people know we're going live or something like that. Is there um, a link? Can, can you, do you have access to this uh, chat over here? Do you see that? Yeah, I see um, us talking live. Um, and then... I see. So here is. So I've already. Can you send me the link to the group? I'm trying to see. Yeah, I think I can copy it and then 
I can send it to you in a private message. Yeah, right? yeah. And I can put, oh, okay. Yep. Got it. And then I'll yeah. just post it in the group there. That way, everybody. Copy. Boom. And that's in here. Yeah, I'm trying to, uh, let's see. Whoa. Sorry. That's not supposed to be there. Oh, yeah. Whoa, whoa. I, I just added it. I added it in my comments section. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's where it would go. Yeah. So I posted in there too. And then... and you should have it on your comment section, I think. Yep. So yeah, we've we've created a group on Facebook where the intent is obviously to continue down this path, talking about frequency and energy and how important it is. And there's a lot of topics, you know, we're going to cover how wealth and, and money is a frequency, how consciousness, how thoughts. Um, so we're just really scratching the surface here. And um, it really just draws more attention and the importance of our energy. So I guess. Yeah, and we'd like to have other people on here. Uh, if anybody's out there that has one of these healies, like let us know too, because we'd like to have you on and give your side of things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I think maybe next episode we should more really break this thing down and how it works and maybe show, do like, maybe I can show, share my screen somehow onto, I think I can do that actually. Yep. And then, yeah, that'd be cool through the process of doing it um, and then maybe look through some of the programs and stuff like that. And, you know, we'll just go from there. We'll just keep it going. But yeah, this podcast is, isn't just necessarily about the Healy. It, it definitely uh, kind of inspired the whole thing and it is part of it, but you know, I think we're, we're going to talk about all kinds of things on here, mostly to do with, I would say, you know, health and, um just social stuff right um the mental aspect all through the all through the thread line of energy vibration frequency which is everything is everything so we could basically talk about anything so um yeah. but yeah you know we could get into quantum physics and all that stuff once again neither of us are doctors or any scientists or anything like that but we just love doing research <laughs> Oh, so you got, what do you got, like 10 minutes left? Let's talk about the goddamn fucking document. So, so last night I'm like, oh, I'm not really feeling good. good. My fucking wife was sick and I thought I got past it, but all of a sudden it like hit me the last night. And um, so he's like, oh, run, run the uh, immune system program. So I'm running that. And then he sends me another text. He's like, oh, check this out. And it's this documentary. So I'm like, all right. I was, I was literally going to like, I was, I was actually going to have a moment of escapism before I went to bed. Right. <laughs> but because I'm so like programmed to not escape, I, he sends me this and I'm like, ah, fuck. All right, fine. I'll play it. I knew it was going to be something I was going to like really probably get into, but I didn't really have the time for it, but I did it anyway. So anyways, what's the name of the, the, the documentary? I don't even remember. It's called like the water something. The, yeah, First of yeah. all, let me just let me just preface this in that because you and I like to go down rabbit holes, no matter where it's going to take us. Like we're never scared. Right. We're always open for new opinions. We are always willing to have conversations, and we never claim to know everything. Yeah. But you know, like there's there's a lot going on with covid and there's a lot of things going around youtube and so somebody sent me this video a while back a musician friend of mine who's in his 50s and he's cool as cool as shit and he's like check this out and so it's a 40 minute video basically talking about the possibility that bing lu the researcher um that was working on COVID um, and that was killed. It's called a murder suicide. Um, could have he, the theory is that he could have possibly been onto something and 
then that kind of went down a path of some crazy things. So I just feel like we should leave it there, leave the link in the comments, and, you know, just like mic drop. <laughs> just like that? I don't know. I mean, because I don't want to say. Does it sound like, like hokey and like conspiracy theory? That's why you don't want to talk about it? Yeah, because I I don't ever claim to like believe everything. And I take everything for a grain of, with a grain of salt. But well, first, off, first off, the guy, the guy's a doctor that's getting interviewed, but he's a chiropractic doctor. Right. Correct. So there's like, all right, all right. But a lot of the things he was really connecting some dots and then they show, you know, they're obviously doing like Google searches and then showing articles and also news broadcasts, like saying what he's saying. Right. You know? um, and the other part of it. OK, so I will say the other part that. So I do remember when I was in Australia and COVID was coming out and we were just reading about it. And that was when the start of tracking the numbers of infected people started. And I remember the article in Australia, I was in Melbourne, was that it had originated from a pangolin. I remember that. Yeah. Well, I don't even know what the fuck that is. Uh, a pangolin is its just an animal. It's another animal like that's thing something it's it's kind of like a platypus and a armadillo and a, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a pangolin it's a different it's a it's pangolin, a, it's a pangolin. <laughs> um but apparently you know the theory was that people at the wet market had come in contact with the little uh bad pangolin meat and then COVID had spread and that was the first article and i was like what the but you know who knows um then I missed a lot because I kind of went offline for a while. And I guess the median part was that it could have came from a king cobra snake. And then we landed on bat. And the bat part is what we've all focused on, that the, the protein spikes that happen with the COVID virus are from a bat. Now, this theory from this video that we've just dropped is saying that it's actually from the King Cobra. And it's creating a cytokine storm well, I mean, within your yeah, organs. A lot of stuff here, right? Like, yes, it's a, like it's a it's a created in a lab. Like if you believe that theory that it was a lab created virus, this guy is saying that snake venom is actually in the virus. Well, they're not saying that at all. They're saying that oh, no, that this that we have said that the spike protein is from bat DNA. But what they're saying is that the spike protein is from snake venom. So they're saying that the cytokine storm that's being created by the COVID virus in organs is similar to snake venom poisoning. Now whether I believe that or not is a whole nother story, but it's definitely out there and there's a lot of people passing it around. And I find it very interesting that there's lots of different, you know, viewpoints. That's all. I will leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done talking. I mean, it goes, it goes so deep that it's like for all those that like are like, Man, there's some worldwide conspiracy to like fucking kill off people and and do all this shit. This is actually something that almost legitimizes that. Right, which is why it's, you know, being passed around and, you know. And it's like not in like a weird, crazy, like out of this world like there's fucking aliens are taking over or lizards or some shit like it's like hey well this company bought that company and this company does xyz so he does follow a thread that's that's um compelling i will say compelling yeah that guy what was his name again it was uh dr brian um i don't remember the chiropractor's name i just remember specifically because I, I can only say what I know from my experience, right? And that is 
when I was in Australia, they said it was a pangolin. That's true. I read articles. They were like legitimate articles from legitimate sources. And then um, I also remember when Bing Lu came I remember up that one. Yeah. And they were basically, you know, people, people were trying to find out um, what happened. And there was journalists, a journalist went missing. And so it, it draws a very interesting narrative that I could see how a lot of people could think that he was assassinated. Whether I believe it or not, I don't know. I'm just saying that's what they're putting out there. And I think it's, you know, it's something to think about, right? Well, this guy, I mean, for those that aren't aware of Bing Lu, I guess this guy was, he worked for a uh, research facility in Pennsylvania where they were, he was about to release the, the studies that he had done on COVID and where he believes it stems from. And um, those studies have yet to come out because, first off, because he got killed. <laughs> and like the news reported on it, you can go on YouTube and search this guy's name, Bing Lu Bing, right? Bing Lu. And um, second off, because obviously the, 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 the facility has his studies, but they won't release it now. But he was basically going to come out and say that there was venom in the fucking virus. Yeah, but that is that is really oversimplifying it. I think that's that's why con conspiracy theorists get spread around because well, I'm trying to over to like it. oversimplify it. And to I'm me, they're talking about the cytokine. I'm I'm obviously not a scientist, but I've read it a lot lately, and there's a lot that's out there if you want to read. You know that talks about the spike proteins and the cytokine storms that happen within your organs to have organ failure to then die from COVID. And the, they're saying they're saying that the cytokine storm is not being created from a bat protein. It's being created from a king cobra snake venom or a crate snake venom protein, which would be very sinister if that was happening. But you know, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and why would we want to put that energy out there? We don't want to put that energy out there. See, that's that's your thing, right? So you have these thoughts and, and whatever, but like you choose not to put that type of energy out into the world. But at the same time, you're not like communicating about what potential thoughts are there. So I think through the through a conversation about this stuff that you can we can put like I don't know a positive spin on it or like it's the truth. The truth is the truth. Sometimes the truth fucking yeah. is shitty, you know? Yeah, but here's the thing. Like I come from a place that I feel like time is ticking. We are in this like fork in the road in human civilization where we have choices. We can make better choices now, like with solar panels and electric power and looking to nature to find answers to the problems that we have within this world. And to me, spending time on a side, like spending any energy there in a... Like, we'll never get answers, right? We'll never find out how Bing Lu died. We'll never know. We will yeah. never know. You know where? We you know the days, probably. That guy has spent like half his life to probably make that little video. Yeah, but you know where the positive side of this is? Is making people aware so that they can do things. Because at the end of that documentary, it actually had a list. I don't know if you saw the very end of um, minerals or, or vitamins or other things that you can take that can help with the defense of your body from these. Yeah, like vitamin C and copper and. Well, it was know. like zinc and, and some zinc. other. Things, yeah. Right. So, like, that's like, if we had that conversation, that would be the focus. Like, listen, we're making you aware that this is a possibility, right? 
Here's the compelling evidence. Whether we believe it or not, if you're trying to, pre because that's what we're talking about here most of the time, right? Prevention. Prevention, right. right? If 100%. you do believe it, then take these things. If you don't, okay, but you could still take these things and they're going to benefit you. They're not going to hurt you. Like zinc doesn't hurt you. Right. Well, here's here's also the the caveat, and then we I have to end this. pop in real quick. And then we, who? My sister's on here. You want to pop her in? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Here's here's the other thing to to this. Hey, sis. Uh, no audio. Oh, hello, oh. hi guys. We hey. got you. What's up? There's Kim. I'm just listening. I'm taking it in. I listened to this whole video yesterday. It's crazy, right? Oh yeah, yeah, she watched the documentary too because I sent it to her last night. What, do you, right, what do you think? Well, I mean, it's hard, and this isn't the only one with their own theory, but there's other ones out there that do the research and do have the back, the science to back it up and the articles to back it up. Like Dave was saying, it's 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 an interesting mix to throw in the bag that is just as valid as like a few of these other things that have been out there, but yeah. It seems the most valid as of late. <clears throat> well, what else is going on right now is that like there's so much information out there, so many different ideas and thoughts on right. every single fucking thing you can think of. Never mind just Corona, like health, freaking whatever. And and anybody can go in any avenue and just believe what they want to believe. Whereas we're just trying to just say, here's everything. This is what these people are doing here. These are what these are people are doing. This is what we're doing. Um, and well, and I mean, going back to what you were saying earlier, Joe, about like where I choose to put my energy and stuff, like also thinking about what we're trying to do with this project, you know, and bring people in to talk about uh, energy and vibration and all these things um, and consciousness. Yes, these things in our daily life are affecting us, but also it is a quick pathway to get censored. Like I have, a, uh, yes. I have so many friends. That <laughs> I have a friend who's a chiropractor who refuses to go <laughs> online again because he got banned. I have, um, and and I'm not talking about people who are like conspiracy theorists. I'm just talking about people saying like, their mind like oh something is weird going on here like i believe in holistic medicine um to to heal myself from sickness and trying to find the line between covid and and he got banned and my friend peter has been banned like six times and once you get banned hmm. you can't come back for like 29 days and then on top of it you get lowered in the algorithm for 59 days he just sent me a screenshot of the latest um censorship that he got and all he does is post like Take vitamin C if you're feeling down, you know, like, what? so That's crazy. It's, it is crazy. So, but it's valid. It's, it shows and it's a good example of what's happening out there. Yeah. And so. if you watch this documentary, it might make a little more sense why they would do that. Well, I, I will say, you know, I don't believe everything I see, but I'm, all, I'm, I mean, if, if any of that is true, they should just like let it go and just let people come to their own conclusions. Like, I don't see, like by by banning people like that, it's on just these little chilling. simple things is actually making it a bigger deal than mm -hmm. it should be. Like you know, like it's it's right. it's drawing more attention to any behind the scenes stuff than it is if they just let it go. Yeah, and it may it makes it seem more sinister. Suspicious. Or it makes more people look yeah. into it. it. Makes more people. It's like yeah. why are you banning people for putting like holistic. Idea, I mean, we should see how like long that. this video even lasts. Ugh, don't say that. So no, no, you just brought this to my attention now. And we need to self-censor ourselves just to get this out there. So we kind of like got to talk in code. Yeah, I mean, this, the Healy alone is already, uh, you know, the a borderline wellness product. So right. coming at it in in the idea of frequency and energy i think is smarter than talking about wellness even though mm -hmm. the end result for me is wellness and everyday practice with wellness you know that would be like banning me for talking about doing a yoga practice right 
<laughs> like, right, yeah. well, like doing yoga and meditating is great for you. And then next day we get banned. <laughs> like, I don't know. Well, well, like, like, like the Healy is huh? like a tool. The Healy is a tool. Like it helps you navigate what's going on with you and lets you take appropriate decisions and actions for yourself. Right. I don't have a Healy, but I'm in a place where that, where I'm listening more to just like just go moving forward in a positive manner in my own pace with blinders on like don't look at anybody else you're in your own path it'll happen for you when it needs to happen in its own time just keep trucking forward in your own path yes and it will come and so far since i've embraced that over the past two years things have come slowly but surely and i'm hoping that this year might be a more impactful year for myself since now COVID's kind of dying and what i do in art i have to physically put myself out there and do like a pop-up show and stuff so i'm starting to do that now that's awesome and I'm a little afraid and these are part of the things that suck about getting to your goal like i have Right. I'm confident in my work, but I'm, you know, it's it, it it makes me anxious. I have a little anxiety about like physically setting up and being there. But if I don't do it and learn the process, I can't get to where I'm going. And I have to do this admin stuff behind the scenes for art. And I have to do um, a website and I have to do social media and I have to learn these things, but I've learned them through my, my ties at Monet and now, now doing admin for them and I can use it for myself. But it's like, I tell my kids every day in order to get to where you, you have to do a lot of things you don't want to do every day. Like, I don't want to make dinner for you every day, but I have to, <laughs> I don't want to fold your clothes and do a million loads of laundry every day, but I have to, someone has to do it in order for us to have the good days where we spend the whole day out hiking or something. So Kim, so Kim is, <clears throat> you know, a, I call you a professional artist at this point. You're a professional and an artist, author, right? And an author. And an author. Yeah. Yes. Book, uh, <laughs> Soul's talent, right? Is Hold on. That was, I should Soul finds her talent. Soul you should her know talent. that. My daughter's name is Soul. It's about my daughter. Um, and, uh, so that can be found on Amazon, right? And what's your website mm -hmm. for, for your art? It's KimberlyRatlessArt.com. Right, right, right. So, um, so yeah, she's starting a business. We we actually just uh, last night we we like went into a pretty overload of numerology, right? And oh, I could talk about that forever. You know, that's another thing that kind of like plays along with this. You, you still got a few minutes, David, or not? Well, I feel like um, I've got to go and. <laughs> Oh, you four guys minutes? are like what four on minutes. two hours now? Okay. So Jeez. four minutes. Um, so you were talking about uh oh, shit, how does this correlate? Um well with Dave, just to say, just to put a plug out for your products, I am living my truth. I love it. Yeah, and I, love I it have too. my shirt. <laughs> I've noticed I've noticed you like over the last two years, like put yourself out there and all your yeah, creativity yeah. and I know like from, from my point of view, like it is, it is hard to do. And like, sometimes you're scared to do it and you don't want to do it. But if you run to that fear, that's where the magic happens, well, you, right? Where you don't know. You, right. You have to run towards it and you have to, you have, you have to just like move forward. Yeah. Like if yeah. you don't do it, then nothing's going to come. You have to um, ignore the fear. You yeah. you can't give the fear power. You have to say, you have to look at a different perspective. Like, okay, That's it. I just have to do this. Period. Like, no excuses, no ins and outs, no ifs and buts or whatever. Like, this is just something I have to do. And Live let's just truth. like focus and it. get through the points so that we can get to the other side of that and then see all right. the good stuff. I remember where the numerology comes into play. So, so you were talking, okay. about the, the you were talking about how the the Healy can like um, make you know. You were talking about how this can kind of make you more independent, uh, personal responsibility, all these other things, make you become the person that you want to be, right? Uh, yes, 
Once again, yes, a tool. Numerology is also a tool. Not everybody is a leader, although the media makes it seem as though you're needed, you're you're supposed to be the boss or in control of everything. There's a lot of people that are were meant to be on earth to just help others do work, right? So, but what the Healy and numerology can do is, is create an awareness of who you are so you can play your role in the, the group, uh, the, the whole energy mass of society that we live in, right? And, and live the happiest you life in your path, the direction that you're supposed to be in, right? Mm -hmm. um, but there's a That's bunch of- a big picture. There's a bunch of things that have to go along with that. You know, you're, you're talking about how like everybody's just like, you know, uh, oh, I, I, the universe is happening to you all the time, right? Those those types of people that are like, oh, well, uh, this happened to me today and that happened to me, blah, blah, blah. And they feel like they have no control. Now, the, the Healy, numerology, and most of all, awareness of self-awareness is the main key. Mm -hmm. And knowing your place, right? Um no, understanding your numerology. So we talked about my sister numerology yesterday. She's a five, which is all about like traveling. She lives in Hawaii. She travels all the time to different islands. They go to yeah, we're going to Tahiti yeah. this summer. They go to Tahiti. They go everywhere, right? Yes. So she's living <laughs> un, unbeknownst to her, she's just been doing it. Good, good for you. That's 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 when you're living really my truth without knowing. But I mean, yeah, yeah it's not. But then there's like details yeah. within that too that, that can help you understand like you have like life challenges and stuff like that. So th anyways, th these are all the things that we and can just get into. Tools. Yeah. Day, you know? Like it gives you the big picture, but also on a small scale, it gives you the tools to make the decisions to gain more control of being the star of your own movie. Right, right. Like control over your life and where you want to go like don't be the mailman the way i see it is like <laughs> yeah, yeah the bystander just watching you you your family live and you're not doing anything like like you just said like be the star of your own show it's like that's how i see it i see it as like all humans are like actually living in their heads in somewhere else right and they're like just controlling this human on earth right and they a can a lot of people aren't controlling, controlling it or they could just kind of like oh there's my character just floating around there you know um so it's like mm -hmm. more control all right so then there's physical aspects of like okay so in my mind in my video game head or whatever i want to achieve x y and z goal okay so now i have to go into my character the human character on earth right <laughs> and play him in and do all these checklist things over the course of however much time to get to that goal right that's you can my, visualize that nice before you do it <laughs> hey guys i have to go you guys can keep talking <laughs> Yeah, well, Soul just woke up, so I got to get going too. But I mean, this is. Oh, was... yeah, she's going to want to see the wow. dogs. She only We're going to do this more, though, Kim. I'm glad show. you jumped on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I with the time difference, I'm shocked. Oh, oh yeah. Did you hook up to one of these <laughs> this things? This wasn't even planned. <laughs> I know. Either was this, really. Yeah. We just so. decided. And that's, that's good. Just do it organic, today. organic planning. That's how, I, that's how I roll. Well, there you go. That's, that's what we wanted to do. That's what. The whole idea with the frequency project, like you picked up on the wave. <laughs> yeah, you got to start somewhere. Today was the first day. And uh, cheers to many more. Yeah. Love you guys. All right. All right. Love you too. Aloha. Bye. Cheers.